It's here. It's finally here. Time lapse. The year is 2020. You're browsing Kickstarter, and what do you see? An adorable retro style game that gives you insane Super Nintendo vibes. You decide to back this title because it reminds you of Days of Gaming Past. Fast forward to August of 2023, and the game you've finally been waiting for all these years gets a release. You sit down with your controller and get ready to experience your childhood thanks to Sabotage Games with Sea of Stars. Good evening, my friends. Welcome back to Shinky Plays, and today I want to give you my first impressions of Sea of Stars. Released on August 29th, 2023 for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox, and PC via Steam. Furthermore, this game at launch is on Game Pass and PlayStation Plus Extra. You have no excuse not to play it. Anyway, all the footage you're about to see is from the first hour or two of the game, so spoilers will be minimal. So grab a snack, strap yourself in, and get ready to hear the meat and potatoes of Sea of Stars. Sea of Stars follows the tale of Valer and Zael. Valer, born on the winter solstice with the power of the moon, and Zael, born on the summer solstice with the power of the sun. Very curious children with late magical abilities have the tendency to get into trouble. One day, they decide to explore the adventurer's cavern with their plain old friend Garl. Within the cavern, they get jumped by several monsters, and the team of friends are almost killed, but they get saved by the local headmaster, escaping with their lives, only resulting in Garl's eye being injured. It is this set of events that causes the headmaster to see potential in Valera and Zael, and he takes them off to a school in the sky to train for years until they are worthy to go off on their own adventure. The story of Sea of Stars feels very reminiscent of games like Chrono Trigger and Secret of Mana. It seems quite similar, but unique. I can't wait to see the direction this story goes. Oh, the gameplay mechanics. I love them. The combat feels like a mix between Chrono Trigger and Super Mario RPG in a strictly turn-based combat. It has the aspect from Super Mario RPG of in-battle QTE events. Pressing A right before a physical attack will increase its damage, pressing A right before taking damage will reduce it. Furthermore, each skill has a unique QTE to increase its damage. It's quite intuitive, and it stops the game from being a mindless button masher and requires you to pay attention. Furthermore, you have combo attacks from the likes of Chrono Trigger or I Am Setsuna. As you attack, you build up a combo gauge. Keep filling up that combo gauge and you earn points. You can then expend those points to do attacks with multiple party members, such as having multiple normal attacks at once or a full party heal. These combo points expire at the end of combat, so there's no point in holding on to them. Another interesting aspect of the gameplay is the leveling. You know how in lots of RPGs you kind of want to avoid leveling earlier so that later party members don't end up vastly underleveled? Not a problem in Sea of Stars, as you have a party level. When you gain levels, your whole party gains a level, so your whole party will be similarly leveled up. You do give each character a specific stat bonus per level up, but outside of that there are no individual character levels. Outside of battle, it has a very similar world map looking like Chrono Trigger, where you see your party from a bird's eye view and walk from town to town. Dungeons are quite a bit puzzle based, so far they're quite simple, but it's nice to see puzzles again. Puzzles in RPGs have been very minimal and non-existent as of late, so it's nice that we get to experience them again. Have you ever seen pixel art so absolutely gorgeous? Sea of Stars has some of the best pixel art I've ever experienced. It's an incredibly colorful game with some of the most amazing area designs I've ever seen in a retro style game. The caves look cold and fearful, the sunny fields look warm and inviting, and the towns at night look peaceful. Honestly, it has to be one of the nicest looking pixel games to exist. Want to make it look even better? Play it on an OLED screen. Ah, it's just so amazing! In addition, the animation is on another level. It's a 60 FPS game, and everything looks so smooth. From the jumping to ledge to ledge, battle animations, and just running from screen to screen. This has to be one of the most aesthetically pleasing games in recent years. How did an indie title get the legendary Yasunari Mitsuda? I'm not sure, but it absolutely pays off. You may know of him from Chrono Trigger, Xenogears, and Mega Man Legends fame. 
an absolute legend lending his genius to Sea of Stars pays off. Now, he is only a guest composer and lent his musical talents for 10 songs in the game, but it's so great regardless. Fits the whole retro feel without sounding like chiptune music. The music is incredibly varied and fits each area so well. I'm not terribly far into the game at this point, but I haven't been disappointed by any music at all. Looking forward to continuing on to hear more of these amazing pieces of music. Alright, not everything can be sunshine and rainbows. Now, while the game has been amazing so far, I do have two concerns. One of which is easily remedied. The first thing that bothers me is the dialogue bloops. When there is a cutscene and your characters are talking, there's this light tapping sound as the words come up on your screen. It's meant to simulate the dialogue from old visual novels, however it personally annoys me. Thankfully, this can be fixed in the options menu. You can either turn up the sound or turn it down, or just shut it off completely. It's a nice aspect for that retro feel, but I'm not a huge fan. The other concern that I've noticed is that there are semi-common grammatical and spelling errors in the game. From words just being incorrect such as remember instead of remember, or just sentences not flowing properly. It's not incredibly common, but it does happen here and there. Hoping that a patch is out soon to fix these. I would imagine it's only due to Sea of Stars being done by a French studio and the dev team might not be perfectly fluent in the English language. Not the biggest problem, but it is definitely noticeable. Other than that, I'm in love with Sea of Stars. So far, Sea of Stars is such a relaxing and mind-blowing experience. The game has such a strong retro feel, but feels incredibly modern at the same time. A gorgeous experience that controls incredibly well. I can't wait to get further into the game. After I complete the game, I will put out a full-blown review, so if you don't want to miss out on that, ding that notification bell and subscribe to the channel. I like the video while you're at it. Are you picking up Sea of Stars or have you already? If so, what are your thoughts on it so far? Let me know in the comments below. That's the meat and potatoes, folks. Thanks for tuning in and have a wonderful day.